Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, my season of promise. Say like a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. God loves you. Somebody say, God loves me. God loves you. He does everything for you. He gives you everything and he does everything. Sometimes in life, you meet different types of people. Sometimes you meet good people. Sometimes you meet bad ones. You may be good. You show them love. Some people return that love to you. While some, you will never see them again in life. And some of them that you show love will pay you back with evil, hatred. They will dislike you so much upon all the good things you have done for them. That is life for you. You are living in the world to see good things and the bad things. You don't say, nobody say, I want to see bad things. Everybody wants to see good things. But sometimes good things will come to you. Sometimes bad things will come to you. Life goes on. The most important thing is that life you are living. And this life, you find yourself that you are alive, it is God's making. It is only God that can do it for you. No man has the power to give you life. So, there is something that man cannot do for you. And that in his breath of life. It is God that can make you to live in the land of the living. Life is all about spiritual because God gives life. God we serve is a spirit. He is not a man. He is a spirit. Sometimes in life, you feel that the money you have made is why you are living. Because if you are sick and go to hospital, the doctor will examine you and move on with the treatment. After the treatment, you have your bill and pay it. When you come back, you feel that that money has saved you. Some people like you, we are sick. They went to hospital. They were examined and being treated. They paid the huge amount of money but they couldn't survive. So money cannot give you life. It's only God that gives life. There are things your money cannot solve in your life. So money you see makes you happy because people, when they see that you have money, they admire you and they respect you. And you think that it's your money that is making it. If you are not alive, you cannot make money. A dead man cannot make money. And nobody admires him or respects him because he's dead. So the most important thing we talk of in life is the promise of life God has given to you. Let's see the holy book. The book of Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Can we read together? And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion, 
over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Thank you, Jesus. The promises of God in your life are the blessings of God in you. The promise of God, which is the blessings of God, reminds you of who you are in this world. God did not give you money, but he gave you his blessings. And the blessings is the power for you to make life. The Holy Book says, he blessed them that they shall be fruitful. They shall multiply. They shall replenish the earth and subdue the earth. That is power. Somebody say power. So God has promised you his power to make life. You need to follow the promise of God with faith. It's not just ordinary Bible reading. It's referring to you. Giving them is giving you. You are among them. That God has given these blessings. So you follow the promise of God with faith. Because faith makes life easy. And what is faith? Faith is the word of God in you. Somebody say in me. Are you hearing the word of God? The word of God in you is the faith you have. When the word occupies your heart, when the word enters in you and takes place in your heart, you have faith in God. The book of Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, so then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. So you don't say that you have faith when the word of God is going on, you overlook it. You are doing another thing. You neglect it. You don't care because in you, you know that you can do it very well. Doing it, preaching, teaching is not all, is not where it ends. It's practical life. When you practice what you are saying, one way or the other, you might not be perfect, but you are trying to do what you are teaching others, what you are preaching. That proves to you that you have faith. If somebody is telling you that you must pray in the morning and he or she is not praying, he doesn't have faith. And you think that every man of God that tells you to pray in the morning prays. Not every man of every man of God prays. Not every man of God prays. Bear it in mind. He or she may teach you to pray but it is not easy to pray. But you are hearing it to make it part of your life as a child of God. So the word you are hearing and practicing will give you ideas on how to make this life. It's giving you ideas on how to make life. If you practice the word of God, you are trying to fulfill the promises of God in your life. Because when you work hard, you are fruitful. When you work hard, you are fruitful in your own calling. In your own business, that thing you are doing, if you can do it well and work hard and push it on, you are fruitful. Because you are producing something out of it. The promise God gave to you, he said that you are blessed. Is somebody hearing? God said that you are blessed. That is the most important thing about you. Then people now will say that you are cursed. And your mind will deviate from that blessing of God you heard. And focus on what they say about you. 
that you are caused. In your mind, they say that I am caused. Why must they say that I am caused? Why must they cause me? Why must they use my name for evil purposes? Why must they talk about me in this way? Does it mean that the word of God is not upon me again? You are the one that chooses to live such life. You believe in them. Believe in your creator who made you in his own image, in his own likeness. He said that you are fruitful. You will multiply. You will replenish and you will subdue the earth. Every condition that is not from him. Anything God has not spoken about you is a lie. Anything, whatever that may be. If people are disqualifying you, bringing you down, calling you names so that others will not believe in you, do not mind them. Focus on what God has said about you. Hold it tight. Do you know their problem? They want you to be like them. That is why they are saying all these things they are saying. But you know that the word of God has entered you and made you to have your own lifestyle and that lifestyle reflects in your attitude your lifestyle reflects in your values what do i mean by that when the word of god enters you you don't look around to see what people are doing but you move to meet up with the demands of god in your life Our spiritual director always teaches us that if people are liking you, if they like you, you are not making life. Do something, not evil thing, but do things that will marvel them. Things that people will see and know that you are a special entity in the Lord. The way you talk, the way you act, you know in life, people will like you to talk like them, whether rich or poor. Whether rich people or poor people. There is something that people do misunderstand. They think that when you are rich, you are a good person. Then when you are poor, you are a bad person. No. What brings poverty into your life is not working hard. Somebody say not working hard. Brings poverty in my life. So, there are good people, but they are not strong. Somebody may be good, but he or she is not strong to make money. Are you getting it? Then there are people that are very bad, wicked people. They are pushing life. They are working hard. Still, they get that money. So, money cannot confuse you in life. If you want to be rich, work hard. You'll be rich in your own level. Are you hearing? If you want to be rich, you work hard in your own class and you will get, be rich. What is richness? To take care of your responsibilities. To pay your bills. To live your life. To take care of your people that are your responsibilities. Your wife, your husband, your children, and the people that you can lay your hands upon to help in life. You are rich because you are maintaining all these things. So, what am I trying to say? If they want you to go to the places they are going, it's not the most that you go there. You have your own time and your own style of living. Not everywhere they go that you should go. You know where to go and you know how many, uh, how many minutes you will spend there and come out from there because you are not like them. Is somebody hearing the word of God? When people want you to act like them, refuse. When they want you to act like them, refuse. Because they will gang up themselves and begin to torture somebody. It's happening in the house of God. They gather against some people. Do not be among them. Do not gather in such forum. You tell them that this is not good. Be out from them. Love everybody. Love everybody you see. Welcome everybody you see in the place of worship. Because you are one big family that comes to serve the living God. You don't eat like them. You have your own taste of food and you don't eat excess. 
Because you are targeting something. And what you are you targeting? You are targeting the promises of God to be fulfilled in your life. Maturity is what you need. Somebody needs maturity. And what is maturity? Am I talking about age here? No. I'm not talking about age. A young girl of 20s can be matured more than a lady of 50s. Maturity is wisdom. The spirit of God in you. Because wisdom is the spirit of God. If you are matured, you know your steps. If you are matured, you know that you need to take care of yourself. That you should not depend on anybody. Depending on anybody means that you must do what that person asks you to do for you to survive. And many times you cannot do what is right because you depend on somebody to give you money. You don't value who you are. You don't value what you are doing. That is why it is necessary that everybody, you call yourself a believer, you must have something doing. That thing you are doing, focus on it. Let me tell you, God is not a blind God. He sees your zealousness. He sees how you are trying. He must surely help you one way or the other. Through that thing you are doing. And it is not bad that somebody will render help into your life. But you don't need to give somebody your life before he renders help into your life. It's God still that will send him or her due to your good attitude and your good values that a reasonable man will see you and help you. A man can see a lady without taking him, her to bed and still help her to live life, to make life. Everything is not taking advantage of your life. God sends his angels in form of man and woman to help you in life. So you are coming to the house of God, hearing the word of God is for you to meet up with the promises of God in your life. As you are following the word of God, you must surely receive the blessings of God in your life. As God has promised you, people you are blessed. People you are blessed. May the promises of God manifest upon your life. May the word you hear change every bad condition in your life. May the word of God show you the secret of your success. You will make life this season. You will make it this season. No power of darkness will block your way. No evil power will block your way. And any man or woman that is a barrier to your business, the Lord will push him away. Amen. The Lord will push her away. Amen. Any mouth that is speaking against your name, the Lord will deal with him. Amen. Father will deal with her. Amen. This season, your business will grow. Amen. Your business will flourish. Amen. You will make money. God will protect your family. Amen. Father will protect your children. Amen. On their way going and coming back, they have the protection of God in their lives. Amen. People, you are blessed. Amen. Your family is blessed. Amen. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You celebrate the Lord as we welcome.